Hello and welcome to Socially Holistic Podcast. Socially Holistic helps coaches and holistic entrepreneurs and women in heart-centered businesses make sense of social media so they can build their own online network and get more clients. As a heart-centered business owner, you do amazing work. Holly's mission in life is to help you help more people. Help us help more women in business with a five-star review of this podcast. Please leave one today over at iTunes. The more women who find out about this podcast, the more heart-centered businesses will be successful. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Socially Holistic Podcast. You will notice that this week is a little bit different. This week I am being interviewed by Joe Casey, who was my podcast guest on episode 21. So this is going to follow the same format as all of my other interviews, but it's reversed. So I'm the one being interviewed. Just thought I'd let you know so you understand what's going on when you get to the proper intro. So thanks for joining us. Hello and welcome to the Socially Holistic Podcast, episode 31. This is your host, Joe Casey, and I'm here with today's special guest, Holly Wharton from Socially Holistic. Holly helps women in heart-centered businesses learn to use social media. Hello, Holly. Hello, Joe. Thank you so much. You're very, very welcome. So, Holly, tell us about your background. My background is very different to what I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. Um, I started out, quit grad school to move to Mexico and start a business with my ex-husband back in 1999. And it was started out with one eco hotel on the coast in Tulum and ended up growing to three hotels and a holistic spa. And I ran that with him between 1999 and about mid-2009, so about 10 and a half years. (gasps) Wow. I know. And it was absolutely amazing. I mean, we just, we lived in paradise. It was in the middle of the jungle by the sea in Mexico. And it was obviously my first business experience. So I learned so much. It was just, I mean, I just got thrown into the middle of, you know, running a business and, and having such a complex business as, as something in the hospitality industry, because it's just Mm. so many things that can go wrong. And as I said, it was in the middle of the jungle. There was no electricity. There was no running water. We had to have water trucked in every day. Yes, yeah, (laughs) nothing. It it was just pure nature, and it was absolutely wonderful. But, of course, there were so many things that they could go wrong. I mean, snakes would get into people's rooms, tarantulas, scorpions. So there's all that kind of excitement. (laughs) Wow, wow. Uh, but already I'm I'm hearing a real thread of this following your heart and doing something very heart-centered because, you know, an eco spa in an eco hotel in the middle of the jungle, that's not most people's first idea of uh, an easy start <laughs> for <laughs> no, uh, their business career. No, it wasn't. And I remember this one time having dinner with, with one of our guests who had owned, I think he had a bar or a restaurant or something in, in D.C. In the, in the States. And... I was just, you know, so desperate because I'd never met someone else who owned a business in the hospitality industry. And so I said to him, you know, I'd really like to know, are there ever days where you feel like, you know, you know what you're doing and you've like got it all together? And he was like, you know what? No, never. I'm (laughs) always, always learning. And I just thought, oh my God, I always hoped that there would be this some moment where everything just kind of got pulled together and I just, you know, was on top of things and I knew exactly what I was doing and I was really confident, but it was like, I was just learning so much all the time. Mm. And my role within the company from the very beginning, and I don't know why, but always managed to be marketing and um, mostly online marketing. So, Mm. you know, getting the website copy and just kind of dealing with all aspects of sales and marketing. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about your business journey. How did you get from there to where you are today? (laughs) Um, Well, I left the company in mid-2009 and Mm -hmm. took about a year and a half off just because I had worked so many hours and seven days a week for 10 years, and Mm -hmm. I was just totally burnt out. Mm -hmm. So I took this time off to just kind of figure out what it was that I wanted to do because I had absolutely no idea. And um, in the 2010, I moved to the UK and still had no idea what it was that I wanted to do, but I started seeing a coach and I ended up training as a coach. And that was kind of the huge shift in my life because coaching just opened my mind up to so many different things. I mean, it was just Mm. hugely transformational on a personal level, just really helped me bust past so many fears and limiting beliefs and, and, and things that, you know, I, I just completely opened my mind. So 
you know, from the beginning when you train as a coach, you're told that you need to find a niche. So at the beginning, I was really, really stuck on helping people find their life purpose and, and kind of make that happen. Mm. And I'd started this blog and I was really into it and really happy with it. But of course, the business was just not happening. And I was mm. really, really struggling to get clients. And a lot of my friends from the coaching school kept saying to me, you know, you know what you should be doing? You should be doing something with social media um, because that's what you're always doing anyway. I was always answering people's questions on Facebook and helping them, giving them advice on how to use social media for mm-hmm. business. It was just something that I did without even thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And, and I really struggled because I really wanted to help people find their life purpose because it had been such a struggle for me and I just wanted to help people make that easier and I was really stuck on that. And then finally I thought, you know, all of these people who know me fairly well and really care about me are saying social media, so I'll give it a try. So very much on a, a rational level, but not really on a passion level, <laughs> I made this shift yeah. to social media. It was just, you know, it was, it was very much still in my head. And I went uh. through all of these different niches within social media. I started this business called SMC Squared, which was social media coaching and consulting. And, you know, I had the website and I got the business cards and I started marketing it. And it was just kind of general social media for small businesses. But I just uh-huh. wasn't really excited about that. Because it just didn't feel right. And then on this um, business retreat that we did on, with my, some people from my coaching school on a canal boat, I got the idea for social media for charities. And I thought, wow, that's great because I'll really ha- you know, be able to help charities make a difference using social media. But then I had all these issues about selling them my services because, of course, they're charities. So I can't ask them to spend money on me even though they have a marketing budget. So I had all these issues about that. So that didn't work. And then I started this business called Tribal Hospitality because my background was in hospitality. So I was going to help boutique hotels do their social media. And I got the business cards and I got the website (laughs) and I got, you know, did everything. Mm -hmm. And it just still didn't feel quite right. And then then I started tribal publishing. um, And that was because I started working with an author. And he said, well, you know, why don't you work with authors? Authors are great. And and Mm -hmm. so I did the website and the business cards. And I've still got loads of clients that are authors. And I really enjoy working with authors. And something that I'm very, very happy with that part of my business as well. But last year, I started doing all of these kind of guided meditations and, and inner journeys and things. And this one thing kept popping up. And it was social media for coaches and women in heart-centered businesses and holistic practitioners. And I really struggled with starting that because I just felt like I've made so many different shifts and so many different changes. And how are people going to take me seriously? And all these limiting beliefs started popping up. And then finally I said, you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to do it. So (laughs) so I did the business cards and I did the website. and, And that is my main focus today. I mean, as I said, I'm still working with a lot of authors on tribal publishing, but socially holistic is my main focus at this time. And I absolutely love it. And that's really interesting. So you said that you, it was doing the, the social media for a long time was a head decision. It was. And now does it feel like it's aligned with that, that kind of heart desire? Yes, it totally is. <laughs> and I think it was because I found the two groups of people that I like working with. I love working with authors and I love working with coaches and holistic practitioners and women in heart center businesses. So these are two groups of people that I'm really, really excited about and I feel comfortable working with them. Whereas, you know, as I said, with the charity, it was like, that was very exciting because I was helping, but you know, I had so many issues around selling to charity. So Mm. yeah, it feels, it's very much a heart centered issue now. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. I can, I can hear that in your voice. That, that sounds, (laughs) so what have been your, I mean, you've talked about some of them, but what have been your biggest challenges so far in, uh, in, in your business? Well, you know, it's funny. I'm I'm hugely grateful for the experience I had in the hospitality industry and in my previous company, because that was about 10 and a half years of solid business experience and marketing Mm. experience and online marketing experience. And that really, really helped me. I mean, I can see that I have, I came into this business with so much knowledge and information and, and experience that's really helped me. But I would say the biggest thing is, one thing is marketing a company where you've got you know, between 140 and 150 employees, Mm. three hotels. We ended up expanding to South America as well. So we had several different bases. It was this business. And yes, I was kind of the face of it on social media. And I was the face of it publicly to people. 
but it was, it was, there's, there's this whole company around me. Whereas with this business now, it's really just me. It's very, very much all about me. And I had so many issues kind of shifting to doing marketing for myself and putting myself out there. So I'd say that was the number one biggest challenge I've had. I'm a fan of the Social Holistic uh, podcast as well. And as a, a female entrepreneur who's kind of put myself out there, I listen to your guests on the podcast. It's something that I think so many of us struggle with. It is, it is. And I have, I've come through so many personal blogs and I find that, and I have this conversation with so many women, being in business really brings up your personal stuff. Mm. And one of the things that I did last year was I trained in this technique called Psych K. And what it does is it kind of reprograms in your subconscious limiting beliefs and it reprograms, you know, the positive belief and the the helpful Mm. belief. And that has helped me so much in getting through my personal stuff. There was a point last year where anytime anything came up as I was working in my business, I just had this notepad and I would make kind of make a list of all the beliefs that were coming up for me at that time. And then on the weekends when I had time, I'd, I'd sit and I'd kind of reprogram those beliefs. And it just really helped me push through a lot of stuff. Wow. So what's that called? Psych K? Yes, it's absolutely amazing. I've done, I've done the basic course and the advanced course, and I'm hoping to take some, some more courses this year. It's, it's just absolutely wonderful. I love it. Wow. I'll have to check that out. Definitely. <laughs> okay. So what, what is it that you love most about your business? You've talked a little bit about that, but I want to I wanna find out what is it that really makes your heart sing? I just, I love helping women in business demystify social media and the techie stuff because I just feel like so many people just kind of get stuff wrapped up in their heads about how they have to be really techie to understand social media and to use it right. And and they read all this stuff and they hear all this stuff and they just feel like, oh, what if I make a mistake? And they just kind of build it up to be this big, scary thing that it isn't. And I just, I really love kind of honing down and, and making it really simple for people because it's, it's just about making connections. I mean, in the same way that you would go to a, a business networking meeting at BNI or, or whatever group it is that you might belong to, it's the same thing, but it's just doing it online, which of course makes it so much easier because you're opening yourself up to a massive audience. Hmm. But I think that aspect of it for so many people makes it even scarier because you're opening yourself up for a massive audience. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it is, but the the way I, I work with people, if you're in a heart centered business and you're really sharing what it is about what you do from the heart and it, and in a place of wanting to help people, you really can't go wrong because you're truly just wanting to help people with whatever service or product it is that you that you provide. So if you're coming from place in the heart and, and you're just looking to help, it's really, really hard to kind of mess up and, and you know, create a, an international outrage or whatever it is over your marketing. I mean, it's just not going to happen the way it happens with, you know, some of the major corporations that make these terrible mm. blunders on social media. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a lot safer than people realize. Okay. All right. Okay. So, I mean, this is your area of expertise. So what are your top tips for people, how, uh, particularly around how to market their business using social media? I would say, first of all, focus on connection and focus on the individuals. I think so many people get caught up in, oh, I have to have, you know, thousands of Twitter followers and Facebook fans mm. and, and I don't know, people following my YouTube channel and Google Plus and, and all of that. And it's it's really just... It's about getting to know people and getting to know individuals and building relationships with them. It's really about people and it's not about numbers. So just say, first of all, be authentic. And I know everyone says this, but truly, this is what makes you stand out. So if you're, again, speaking from the heart, sharing your stuff in a natural way, using your natural language and really communicating clearly who you are, who you help and how you help them, that's going to draw people to you or not. And this is the important thing about using social media is that if you're really clear on who you are and what you do, people are going to naturally be attracted to you or not. And if they're not, then they're not your ideal client anyway. So it's really, really important to be yourself, not copy other people, um, because then you're just going to be attracting the wrong people. Mm. And... And again, just focus on helping people online because there's so many ways you can help people, whether it's through your blog posts or um, sharing little tips on Facebook or on Twitter. There's so many ways to help. And by spreading that kind of um, 
good internet karma <laughs> that, that will help your potential clients, that will help potential joint venture partners, and that will help attract people to you. Hmm, okay, so what about if I'm totally new to all this? Mm-hmm. What would be a good, say I'm a, I'm a um, holistic practitioner, what would be some good first steps to make my first kind of foray into the world of social media? The good first steps are to take a look at each different social media site and figure out where your potential clients will be spending time online. It might be Facebook, it might be Twitter, it might be Pinterest, but you need to know exactly where they are online because those are the sites that you're going to need to focus on. And within those sites, you want to focus on the sites that you naturally feel most comfortable with. So perhaps you try video, but you're really not into it and you're not not feeling comfortable with it. So even though you think that your potential clients might be on YouTube, if it's not feeling natural for you, then you probably don't want to be focusing on that. But if, say, you suspect that you, you, or you've seen that your potential clients are spending a lot of time on Pinterest, and you love Pinterest because you're a really visual person, then that's a site that you're going to want to focus on because that's going to be really natural for you and you're going to enjoy it. And I think that's another really, really important thing is you've got to enjoy the activity that you're, you're engaging in on social media, because if you hate it, it's really going to come across as awkward and, and strange, and it's not going to be very effective for you. So first of all, you want to get a clear look at who you are, what you do, who you help. Get really clear in communicating this online. Then you want to look for where your potential clients are hanging out online and which of those sites you like. So... Again, focus on the sites that you like, where your target clients are hanging out. Okay, so that seems to be saying that you don't have to be on all of them? No, you absolutely do not. (laughs) And thank you for asking me that. Um, Because there's so many of them. There's so many of them. It looks exhausting. Yeah. (laughs) Whenever I hear about something new, I always try it out and take a look at it because it's, it's very interesting to me and that's what I do and I like to you know look at the new social sites that are coming out. But honestly, uh-huh. you probably want to spend your time on the most established ones and again, focus on, I don't know, two or three sites at the most and really just focus on building your tribe on those sites. And again, focus on the sites that you enjoy using. If you hate Twitter, don't use it. Give it a try. If you think that your, social, that your potential clients are, are spending time there, do give it a try. But if you find that you hate it, don't use it. It's perfectly fine to just quit and put it aside and maybe come back to it in, I don't know, a few months and see if something's changed and see if you now like it. Because I know that I go through kind of phases with social sites. There are periods where I'll spend a lot of time on on LinkedIn and I'll really be participating in in the groups and things like that. And I'll be really kind of sprucing up my, my profile. And then there are periods of time where I just completely forget about LinkedIn and I just kind of connect with people and that's about it. And the same goes for other social sites. Um, I'm pretty regular on Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest and Google Plus, but but that's because that's my thing and I really, really love social media. But you absolutely do not have to be on every single social site. Focus on just a couple. Okay. All right. So I just want to kind of ask, these are questions that very selfishly come up for me, so I'm just going to ask them. Perfect. <laughs> I'm sure I know that they uh, occur to other people as well. So I, sometimes I, I, I get people following me on Twitter or Facebook or I'm following other sites and they seem to be selling a lot. Yeah. And then I think, oh, I don't do selling, selling. I, I just try and have conversations with people. So how do you know if you're getting the balance right? That's a very, very good question. And one of the things that I always say is that it's called social media, not broadcast media. Broadcast media is all about, you know, advertising on TV, radio. It's about broadcasting your message out to people. And that's kind of the big hard sell. Whereas social media is about being social. It's about meeting people. It's about building relationships. It's about getting to know them. And it's about attracting people to you kind of by shining your light out there and and letting people know what it is that you do. I'm really not a fan of the hard sell on social media. So what I usually recommend for people is try to do about 80% conversations, sharing other people's stuff, and just being social, and then 20% maximum of your stuff. And that could be your blog posts, your podcasts, and mentioning your stuff and how it is that you help people. Okay. Oh, that seems much easier. I feel like a big weight of pressure has been taken off me. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> 
Yeah, I think it's really, really important not to be one of those people that's constantly selling. And and this is not something that I see so much with women in heart center businesses, but mm-hmm. I do see it with authors because a lot of authors, I mean, s- with self-publishing, you know, anyone can be an author now, which I think mm-hmm. is fabulous. But but the problem is that a lot of authors don't have marketing experience and they don't mm-hmm. know how to use social media mm-hmm. for, for marketing. And so they're just constantly broadcasting out their message. And it's just, it's, I cringe, these poor people. It's I, It really makes me sad because it's, they're coming off as just, just, absolutely just such a hard sell for their books and uh-huh. yeah yeah you don't want to do that <laughs> keep that okay, to about 20 percent of what okay. you're doing so, <laughs> so about 20 percent of what you're doing is the kind of broadcasting this is my stuff and the rest is interaction and sharing other people's other people's thing yeah oh, okay okay so you've talked a lot about how how social media can be great for um attracting your ideal customer your ideal client and how it's important to be authentic where's the boundary with that how do we know how much to put out there and how much you know do do I say oh I'm I'm having two pieces of toast with jam for my breakfast or is it much more you know (laughs) these are the questions I ask myself (laughs) what kind of jam are you having (laughs) people care it's you know do do you know what I mean it's that um how much of me and my non-businessy life do I put out there and how much is it just the kind of I work with a great client today and how how much of me do people want to want to know I tend to keep it very professional I think the only social media site where I'm really sharing completely non-professional stuff is Instagram and Mm -hmm. it's just photos of my nature walks around England (laughs) So if anyone follows me on Instagram, they're not going to get any marketing messages or anything related to my business. It's just Mm -hmm. England nature shots. Um, So that's just that channel. But every other social media channel, I pretty much keep a professional. And I, I, you know, I'll say things like, oh, I just had this great podcast interview or I just uh, worked with this amazing client who's doing something fabulous or, you know, just Mm -hmm. kind of general business things and and kind of expressing how excited I am about certain aspects of my business. Mm -hmm. And I don't share a lot of the personal stuff. Right, right. Um, But I think you've got to go with what feels right for you. Uh And especially if it's something that you can relate back to your business. Um, I mean, having two pieces of toast with jam may not be related (laughs) to your business, but but you could say, having two pieces of toast with jam as I'm checking my podcast statistics. And, you know, I love being able to work from home and have my home office. And and I don't know, you can find some way of relating it back to your business. (laughs) You know, then then that makes it relevant. But, Mm. um, and you also get, as I said, you need to go with what feels right for you. If Mm -hmm. you're about to post something and you feel like, Mm, this might be strangely misinterpreted. How can I make this more clear? Or is this even worth posting? And then, then just not post. I know that happens to me a lot of times. I'll be about to comment something or post something and then I'll rethink it and I'll just delete it. I'm, I really, really think before I post things on social media. I uh-huh. think I might think about it more than other people do. And, and I have to say, when I had my first company, I was so fortunate in that just about the time that social media was getting started, uh-huh. one of my employees fronted me on Facebook. And, you know, again, social media was just getting started. I was, you know, new to it. I'd been using it a lot for personal reasons. And the second I fronted him, I went, oh, my God, why did I do that? He's going to see all my personal stuff. I'm his boss. Uh Is this okay? And then I kind of had this little freak out. And then I just realized, you know what? That just means that I really need to be professional in how I behave on Facebook, even Uh though it's my personal Facebook profile. And that one thing, and I have to say... Shout out to him. <laughs> Thank you so much for <laughs> friending me. Um, because that one act really, really shaped how I behaved on online in general, but especially on social media. Um, mm-hmm. I really paid attention to always being professional and how I commented on things, how I posted things, and all of my activity on online. So that was really, really huge for me. Mm. So just always think about how you would feel if, you know, one of your clients read something that you posted. Would they think it's relevant? Would they think it's weird? Would they be offended? And then just kind of run that through your mind before you post things. Mm. That sounds like a, a sensible rule of thumb for, for things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're so sensible with all this thing. This makes so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Have you got any other tips? I'm, I'm, I'm aware of time, but I'm thinking, have you got any other really juicy tips for, for people, particularly around social media, particularly for, for women, this idea of being authentic and heart centered and, and putting ourselves out there? Because that can be a bit scary sometimes. It can be a bit scary. And a lot of the women that I talk to are afraid of social media. And a lot of people don't even have a personal Facebook account. So it's, it's all about kind of getting started, perhaps perhaps start with Facebook. You know, if you, mm-hmm. for people that are really, really afraid and don't have any kind of social media presence, start with a Facebook account, you know, your personal profile. Start connecting with only the people that you know, mm-hmm. only the people that you like, only the people that you feel safe with. And maybe get going with that and, and kind of showing your personal stuff and, and getting a feel for how it works. And another thing I would say is to watch. Just start observing. You know, if you think you want to join Twitter before you get started, just look at how people are using Twitter. This can give you so much confidence. Before getting started on Pinterest, just go through all the Pinterest stuff, look at the kinds of things people are sharing, look at other business owners like you, look at what other people are doing. That will help give you so much confidence in starting to do it yourself because you'll realize what is already happening out there. You'll see what conversations are taking place, what kinds of contents people are sharing, and that will really, really help give the confidence. Excellent, excellent. And another thing that I think I haven't mentioned today because I've been talking so much about connecting with potential clients online Mm -hmm. is that you also really want to be looking to connect with other potential joint venture partners online. So other women in business who might have the same kinds of clients as you do or similar client base that you can kind of befriend, get to know, and then perhaps work together on either some kind of project or kind of cross-promoting your products and services, but building relationships with other women in business who are similar to you, because that also gives you a lot of support. Uh, And I think that's one thing that a lot of people that go into business for themselves don't have. And I didn't have that with my first business. I had no clue what I was doing, and I just felt completely lost. But now I've got this huge network of people that I can always just kind of bounce things off or ask questions and, and just have general support. So I think that's another really, really important thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that is something that certainly when I first set up on my own was this idea that, you know, well, I'm going alone and I have to do everything on my own. And, and it was actually you who really kind of taught me that actually, no, there's a whole tribe of people that you can connect with. And, you know, just because they don't live down the road from you doesn't mean that, that you're not going to be like minded, they're not going to be supportive. Mm. And actually, that has been without doubt one of the best things that I've done for my business is, is starting to build that, that supportive tribe of, of like-minded people oh, so kudos good. to you Holly thank <laughs> you you're the one who taught me that thank you <laughs> <laughs> so um, again because I'm, I'm aware of the time do you have any business mentors or are there women in business who inspire you yes I have a whole list I made notes <laughs> It's funny because most of them are in the Southern Hemisphere. There's something about women in the Southern Hemisphere that I love. Um, I'm going to start out with Leonie Dawson because Mm -hmm. I love her. Yeah. Um, Me too. (laughs) I've been following her blog for years, ever since I first saw her do a guest post on Pro Bloggers. So I think that was back in, I don't know, 2010. Mm -hmm. Love her. I'm a member of her Amazing Biz and Life Academy, which I highly recommend. It's just been an amazing place for me to meet other people, help people out and get to know and build relationships. It's just Mm -hmm. absolutely fabulous and I cannot recommend it enough. And I love Leonie. She's just so, so authentic. She's just such a great example of women who just lay it out there online. She's really, really just gets herself vulnerable, shares really personal stuff. And I, and I love how she does that in such an authentic way. So I think she's a huge role model for me, not just in how she uses social media, but also how she runs her business. She's got an amazing business. Yeah. And um, she works, I think, three hours a day? Yeah, I think she works three hours a day and probably yeah. even less now that she's been pregnant and terribly yeah. vomiting this year. <laughs> yes. but, yeah, yeah. But yeah. And, an amazingly successful business like you say just absolutely you know exactly who she is and it's one of those does she call it the marmite test or the the veggie might <laughs> yeah I'm test sure it's you know people either love her or they hate her yeah, and exactly. yeah she's, she's great yeah. so who else natalie sisson the suitcase entrepreneur mm. i i don't know if you've heard of her but she is i first heard about her last year started listening to her podcast mm-hmm. ended up doing a coaching program with her i absolutely love her and i love how again She's very authentic, she walks her talk, and she's 
very much focused on having location independent businesses, which mm. for me is really important because I tend to move countries every few years. <laughs> <laughs> So it's really important for me to build a business that I can take with me and work from wherever I happen to be. Um, uh -huh. So that's really, really important for me. And she's just such a huge inspiration. Um, she's very location independent. She has no home base and she travels all over the world and, and um, she's absolutely fabulous. So I love Natalie. <laughs> the next would be Denise Duffield Thomas, the lucky bitch. And I love her because her focus is on money stuff. And I've, you know, last year I read both of her books, really worked through a lot of my money stuff using her techniques and the, the things that she recommends in her book. And it's really helped me so much. And I just, I love, I, I love her. She was in London last year. I went to see her. She did a kind of a talk and, and we got to speak with her. And, and she's just, she's another person who is very authentic does her own thing and, and, you know, really doesn't care what people have to say about her because she's putting out her authentic help out in the world. And, and yes, I just love her. Good. Yes. Got two more. Next is Dr. Joanna Martin, who was a guest on this podcast, and she's mm -hmm. also from Australia. Love Joanna because she's got this huge, massively successful business teaching other women how to create a successful lifestyle business in a feminine way. And I really love the way she teaches women working with their feminine energy and how we can use that to to be successful rather than trying to emulate men, which I think so many of us do just because men are so much, they're just so out there. Mm. And, and they've, they're the, the models that we've had for so many years. So I think it's just, I really, really like Joanna. I'm doing her um, mentoring program now. Absolutely love it. So really, really enjoy that. And the last person is from here in the UK, Catherine Watkin, who's a good friend of mine. She, we went through kind of the coaching journey together and we were part of this coaching business mastermind group. And she has a business called Sales from the Heart. And what she does is she helps women in heart center businesses learn how to have sales conversations rather than closing the sale and using really kind of slimy, uncomfortable mm -hmm. sales techniques. She, she really teaches sales in a way that feels comfortable and congruent and it just works she's all about helping the client find out about whether they're the right person for you rather than kind of forcing them into something that perhaps isn't quite right and she's just she's again one of those people who really walks her talk i've i've seen her turn down people that you know she felt weren't right even though they were really really interested in joining whatever it was that she was selling if she doesn't feel that someone is right or if they're not you know ready to benefit from it now she will just say you know what I think this is just not right for you at this time. And I just have so much respect for that. And I have so much respect for the way she just totally demystifies sales for people. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> That's a lovely list. I like that list. <laughs> <laughs> so how can other women in business benefit from working with you, Holly? Let's talk about you for a few minutes. Okay. Um, well, I've got two main things. I've got my kind of mentoring coaching program, which is um, three calls in a month. And I've never been quite sure how to define this because it's kind of coaching and it's kind of mentoring and it's kind of consulting. Um, so basically what it is, is it's calls where I help you, you know, get clear on your strategy, how you can best use social media for your business, how you can personalize it and make it really effective. And it's all up to you how we use it. I can just kind of sit there and answer your questions or I can really help you work through that strategy or whatever it is that you need. And my other option is my social media course, which is an online course, and I'm completely updating it this year, and I'm so excited about it. I'm getting ready, getting ready to launch it in a couple of weeks, I'm just building the end of the, the membership site now. I absolutely love this course. I ran it last year. It's an eight-week course, and then I've got a whole package of bonuses and things that go along with it. So I really walk you through how to get clear on who you are, what makes you unique, and how to express this online, how to find who your ideal clients are and where they're spending time online, how to create a whole plan of how to use social media that's right for your business. Um, and then we look, at, we look at blogging, we look at LinkedIn, we look at Facebook, we look at Twitter, we look at other platforms that you might want to consider. And that's the, the main core of the course because I don't want to overwhelm people with too many other options. And then in the bonuses, I go through Pinterest and YouTube and some other kinds of things. But yeah, very, very excited about relaunching this course this year. Excellent. That sounds awesome. Awesome. So where can people find you online? Um, they can find me at sociallyholistic.com. And there I've got links to all of my social media sites. I've got, you know, as I said, <laughs> pretty much everywhere. <laughs> Pinterest.
Pinterest, Facebook, yeah, everything. And nature walks on Twitter, Instagram. yes. Yes, and if you want nature walks in England, Instagram, because that's the only place I'm not really doing professional stuff. But yeah, you can see the personal side of what I do on the weekends on Instagram. <laughs> Holly, it's been lovely talking to you. Thank you so much. I'm so honoured that you asked me to do this. Oh, and, thank uh, you so much, Jo. I've really, really enjoyed your questions. And I really like how you helped me kind of get deeper into kind of my top tips and in ways that people can use social media most effectively. So thank you very much for that. Oh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit sociallyholistic.com forward slash SHP31 for the show notes on this episode. Now, before we sign out today, I just wanted to give a little shout out to the people who have left me fabulous interviews on iTunes. Thank you so much for everyone that has stopped by to give me a rating and review on iTunes. I've got a few from around the world. First of all, from Rob88888, he says, excellent tips on how to manage the voice for those who need to speak professionally in public, as well as those who take an amateur interest in such things. Recommended. I think this is um, a shout out for Episode 4 from Laura Hart, which is one of the first episodes. Absolutely fabulous. Um, next, we've got Jordan Calori, who says, Not just for women. Holly's guests impart wisdom and inspiration for any socially conscious marketing professional. Next, we've got Joe KCB, who just finished interviewing me today, who says, Heartfelt and insightful. Holly has one of those voices that just makes you want to pay attention. Her questions are insightful, and she always seems to get great guests, too. This is my chilled-out weekend listen, and I love it. Next from the U.S., we've got Fode48, who says, I really enjoyed this podcast. Holly Wharton has a great energy, gentle yet probing. The discussions and interviews are always interesting. Then from Canada, we've got Jim Jay, who says, Refreshing and organic podcast. Inspirational and useful information. Definitely someone to pay attention to and follow. So thank you so much to everyone who's given me a little review and rating over at iTunes. I really, really appreciate it. It means so much for me when you take out the time to just head over to iTunes and give me a rating and review. So thank you again to everyone. Thanks so much for listening to the Socially Holistic Podcast with your host, Holly Wharton. Please help us help more women in business by giving us a five-star review of this podcast. The more women who find out about this podcast, the more successful businesses there will be. So please leave a five-star review today over at iTunes. Thank you.